a live recording of Pat Bears Anime Club number 87. It is the fall 2022 uh, review and the winter 2023 preview. Um, and actually, this year, we can say that, that the winter season actually starts in 2023 and not in 2020, like 21, which was our winter's Attack on Titan isn't out yet. Uh, uh, if you remember, winter 2022, Attack on Titan actually started in December of 2021, but was considered to be that season. It like started early. Um, there's been there's been an announcement that 2023 there will be the final season part three of Attack on Titan, but it has not been announced for this season, and you would imagine it would. So. Sorry, fans of Attack on Titan, your multi-year wait for the final season to actually end, you have to wait a little longer. Um, but we're not going to be talking about that much anymore. I mean, maybe it'll come up. Um, we're talking about the, the fall animated start. I'm using AnnieChart.net, um, uh, fall 2022 uh, is what we've got here. I'm going to be talking about these shows. I am recording this live on my uh, Twitch stream. And so chat may have their own opinions of the shows that I'm talking about. If, uh, if I skip over a show because I didn't watch it and have nothing to say about it, they might be like, no, no, wait, wait, wait. And then we'll maybe go back a little bit. Um, we're starting with uh, Akiba Made War, which, y'all, I tried. I tried. Like, it was exciting to hear about this nonsense show that came out of nowhere. Uh, and the first couple episodes hit some people very hard. And this, this is going to be one of those shows that is somebody's favorite show of the season. It just wasn't mine. And I'm not saying that I'm the arbiter of good or bad because I watch a lot of stuff that I'm sure none of you watched. Like I would imagine that I might be the only person watching this that watched and enjoyed Beast Tamer because we'll get to it when we get to it pretty soon. I liked Beast Tamer. Spoiler alert. Um, but uh, Akaba Made War, I love originals. I, I love that they exist. I think it is fantastic to be surprised. The idea of a violent, like, battles with guns between the various, like, maid cafes in Tokyo is, like, a really weird, cool idea. Um, the main character in the first four episodes did not grab me at all. And, in fact, it was the thing where I'm like, wait. I think the other girl that had her first day on the job is actually should be the main character. And it seems to be pretty cool. But I was like, uh, it's just not, it's not doing it for me. Uh, Doodles the Great is in chat saying, uh, it's okay. It's not for everyone. But damn, it was a show that went all, all in on the joke. Um, yes. So, and then it has some thoughts on Beast Tamer. But yeah, this show, I appreciate it existed. It's nonsense in a good way. It just didn't hit me. It is a show that someday I will finish, but I did not finish this season because this season was busy. All right, let's move on um, to uh, Ark Knights Prelude to Dawn. We had eight episodes airing before we get more Ark Knights. I did not try this. This is based on a video game. Uh, I did not watch this. Was Who picked it up? Oh, Crunchyroll has it. Okay. Um, uh, I did not watch this. I don't have any plans to watch the the next Ark Knights, like because this was the prelude to it. Um, I have nothing positive or negative to say. I uh, here's what I will say: uh, No one that I know watched this show. Uh, Beast Tamer talked about this. Beast Tamer, if you would be you would be forgiven for thinking that this was an isekai. It is not. It is an overpowered main character with a pleasant group of young ladies that all think that he's real neat and cool. Um, so it's got harem vibes without having any romance in it. Uh, little crushes, crush, crush vibes. Um, but you would be mistaken, you'd be, you know, forgiven for thinking that this was a uh, overpowered main character who also got isekai or reincarnated or something. No, Rain, Rain is just really special. This is a kicked slash banished show. Uh, I talked about this, about how last year we had uh, Banished from the Heroes Party. This year we had Beast Tamer. Um, next year I believe we'll have three or four Banished because uh, Banished slash Kicked 
is very popular in light novels a few years ago and is now currently very popular in manga. It is, uh, sometimes they are isekais. They're not always isekais. They're, but they are always the main character uh, either hid his talents, didn't know his talents, or um, uh, uh, the party ignored how special he is and they didn't fucking get it. And they, uh, they fucked up by not getting it. Um, so, Regizzle, uh, this show is, Rain is not horny. I will say that. This show is a little horny here and there. There's a few, like, look, is there a scene where he, like, makes a mistake and sees them in a lake? Yeah, of course there is. But, unlike, you know, but, like, it's not a sexual show. It's, it's a little, it's a little horny, but it's not. It, it, like I said, uh, the, a lot of the jokes are like, oh, now four of, now five of us live in this, uh, in one room because the innkeeper won't give us separate rooms because she's like, ah, I, I get, I get you. Like, it's that kind of joke. Also, I will say that this, this show compared to other, uh, uh harem anime is celibate comparatively. And you have to understand that. All anime is inherently a little horny, unfortunately, uh, but it is very light. Yeah, uh, enjoyable. I enjoy this. This show did not need thirteen episodes. I will say that uh, the thirteenth episode is re really feels like the first episode of season two. You know what I mean? Um, it just feels like it's not filler, but it feels like oh, we finished the first arc, and the manga has to keep going, or the light novels have to keep going, so. Here's some fun. Let's introduce a new character in the 13th episode. It's like, sure. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll get, we'll get to that one. Uh, doodles. Um, uh, Berserk, the golden age arc. Uh, so this is, if I remember correctly, this is like the move, like the movie, but with more scenes stretched out. It is, a, it is, this is a Berserk series that has good animation but I will still argue it is not better than the 90s and, uh, Berserk series in terms of animation. That animation is gorgeous and holds up to this day. This is certainly better than the CGI Berserk series that some people have grown up with and have convinced themselves does not look terrible. Um, I do think I'm done watching Berserk as an anime. Um, I have completed the manga in 2022. Uh, and it is, uh, you know, what has been completed of the manga, I should say. Uh, and it is gorgeous and violent and beautiful and depressing. Uh, and I think the original series is fantastic and then nightmare fuel and really disturbing. Um, and I don't know if I need to watch new adaptations of Berserk anymore. But if you are new, I think this is a place to start where at least I can tell you that the animation does not make me feel bad, uh, which is not always the case with Berserk adaptations. Um, I did not watch, watch any of Bibliophile Princess. Um, uh, yeah, just did not check this out. Who had this? Uh, High Dive had this. Did not check this out. Um... Can't really say anything. About, there were the, I watched some romance uh, series this season. Oh, me! Yeah, I only watched one this season. Oh, I only watched one romance season uh, show this season. It was not this one. So, Madhouse is great. Even their B team and C teams are good. So I'm sure this looked great. I just have no in. I, I just have no reference for it. So I did not check it out. Uh, Bleach Thousand Year Blood War. Um. This is on Hulu. That's right. Hulu in the United States. So, um, I'm going to watch this. This is on my 2023 list of shows from the previous year to watch. I will watch this. At some point, I will borrow a Hulu login or get Hulu for a month. Whatever. I will do something to watch this. I'm in no rush to watch this myself. As a former Bleach fan... Uh, anime fan and a and a manga fan of Bleach, I am interested in seeing a show that might 
have less filler because it is not an ongoing show might have i don't know tried to rework some of the mangas like jumping around nonsense um i don't dislike this arc in the manga um i i will say this this is this is the thing i say quite often when it comes to series like this for bleach diehards which i am not one you're getting this arc adapted years and years and years later that rules um uh fruits basket which i i love fruits basket got a complete and good anime and that's unbelievable bleach fans are getting their anime that is so cool and so great and i'm so happy for them even if i'm not in any rush to to check it out i hear good things and that's great uh and studio Perot doing it makes perfect sense who else would be doing it um Blue Lock. Blue Lock is uh, is ongoing. It is a two core. So uh, you're getting more Blue Lock. Um, so I'll give you the pitch for Blue Lock and you can t- and you can decide yourself if this is a show that you want to watch or not. Um, take the friendship and camaraderie and teammate. Uh, we can only do this together elements out of a sports anime. Then you have Blue Lock. Like, what if the point of soccer was, it? you know, hey, soccer's a team sport, but what if it was just filled with individuals and they were gearing it towards battling against each other? Um, There's a long-running manga. I think it's, like, hundreds of chapters. Uh, I have... Um, I, I So, the only sports anime that I like are sports anime about people overcoming things and coming together. I like when weirdos find family together and become stronger together. Uh, That there is a sports anime we will get to that I love. And I have loved this season because it's a sports anime about a goofy little guy just trying to like find his way uh, in a new school. And he tries to join an anime club and instead ends up on the cycling club team and finds lifelong friends and a thing he's good at. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a tiny little volleyball boy who is overcoming the fact that he's a tiny little volleyball boy by being really good. And the and the guy who is supposed to be a genius, but is just marginally better than other people. Uh, he's a genius at volleyball and a dumbass and everything else. And all of the other weirdos on this volleyball team, including a guy who doesn't really give a shit and isn't competitive until he is. And when he is competitive and he is psyched about what he just did, it's this like revelation and everyone gets psyched when he gets psyched. That's what I'm looking for in sports anime. Uh, It's all the shonen bullshit. I love the shonen bullshit. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, And I think Blue Lock is just like, let's get rid of all that. And just do like, what if everybody was an anti-hero? A whole team of anti-heroes. And I'm just like, nah, I'm good. Uh, there's more of it if you like it. Bochi the Rock. Hey, welcome Tony the Swordsman. Um, we're still in the bees, so you got here in plenty of time to hear about some anime. Um, so Bochi the Rock is this incredibly rare thing. It is an anime adaptation that is better than the manga. It takes the manga idea and... And says, you know what? Forget the fact that music is better hearing it than just reading pages. Uh, Forget all that. The medium of anime is a better choice than what you've shown to do with this manga. Because I've gone back, I've started reading Bochi the Rock. Um, Because it's a four panel coma, like joke, it's a joke comic about like, hey, what if a girl that like wanted to get over the fact that she's uh, uh, an introvert learn guitar but learning guitar doesn't make you suddenly not an introvert Uh, and then let's see her try let's just see her try to make this work Um, and instead it's become this like beautiful like slice of life look at multiple people trying their best and oh Bochi is just just so fun Um, 
it's one of those things where like my anxiety clicks up because I it I, there's a this is an empathy generator. There's a lot of empathy in this show going around for these characters, um, and it's really just fun. And sometimes like yeah, it, it gets me like uh, 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 it gets my anxiety going. But it is a beautiful adaptation, and the music is great, like you would expect it to be. Like excellent guitar solos, and like just a bunch of great ladies being great. Uh, this was a good season for ladies being great to each other. If you like that sort of thing, and I do, uh, this was a good season for that. Um, yeah. Um, oh yeah, lots of yeah, just lots of good gags. Um, and lots of great characters. Or just like, hey, we found somebody to be in the band. Oh, that's the person that ditched the band before. The most awkward person you could find to try to recruit. Great job, everybody. Um, yeah, it, it is, uh, as uh, as the kids that aren't kids anymore, because it's been a long time since anyone said this, hashtag relatable. They're not kids anymore. They're, you know. Um, Chainsaw Man. Uh, at the time of this recording, Chainsaw Man has ended its 12 episodes with no season two announcement. I was expecting to hear about a season two announcement that they would have aired in Japan, but wouldn't end up on the um, uh, on the, the stream version because that happens often. Um, there is no season two announcement. Uh, MAPPA takes its time. So if they're not, if they haven't been working on season two or part two of season one, um... I don't fucking know. Um, I don't know where, when we're getting more. I'm expecting we're getting more Chainsaw Man. Because it's. I still would say, check out the manga. I will say that the anime has some elements that I wouldn't even call it filler. You would call it filler because it, it is it is not part of the manga. But I would say filler, non-derogatory. Um, some of the additions that are made in the anime adaptation uh, fill in the world and the characters in, in a way that I really like. There's some stuff that I wish had shown up from the manga, but not much. I'm not going to spoil too much. Um, if you can get over the fact that this is violent and messy, uh, you will see that this is a... It is an exploration of shonen tropes. That is, that it feels to be what Chainsaw Man always wanted to be as a manga. Um, it is not a exploration, like, through the character. It's it's not doing what One Punch Man does or what Mob Psycho started doing as it continued. It is not, uh, it is not that, but it is still an exploration of the kinds of series that exist the, it, within this genre. Um, uh, the fact that there's just, like, so much unique endings is weird and great um yeah, so tony i i the the thing about that is um um uh, tony says do you see that some people want a whole another whole adaptation yeah so there are a lot of people yelling about chainsaw man there are people yelling about chainsaw man saying why are you not watching the best show this season there are people yelling about chainsaw man saying they messed up. This this is not a good adaptation. This is its own thing. Uh, what they should have done it differently. And then there are people yelling who are saying, "I didn't read the manga. Shut up." Now, some of those people that are anime only were saying "shut up" because episodes are coming out and they were looking at it just in the context of the episodes or the episodes that had happened before. And manga people were like. It gets deeper or, oh, well, you know, they didn't do this and blah. And the anime only were like, shut up. Let me like what I like. If even if it's not deep, I like what this is. Even if it's not what you want it to be, it's good. Um, there are bad anime adaptations out there. There are anime adaptations that come out that completely ruin the source material and will mean that some people will watch the show and... Ne not finish the show and never engage with the source material, be it light novel or manga. Um, uh, was a uh, Lucifer and Biscuit Hammer um, from from like this year. Uh, apparent this is from I've never read that manga, but apparently that manga is good, and the anime anime adaptation is bad, uh, and that's a, a bummer. I can say as someone that has read Chainsaw Man and watched Chainsaw Man, 
Chainsaw Man's really good, and you should check it out. You should also read the manga. Um, I think both are great, and I think it is totally worth checking out. Again, you got to be okay with the fact that this is, like, the horror here is mostly, like, it's horrific more than it is, like, genre horror. Um, but it is violent and awful in parts and sad and yeah it it's great it's a great adaptation i don't know there'll be more chainsaw man in the future it's a big hit um uh you know yeah um i say this is somebody that like often talks about like well in this thing and in this version oh in this one like you can't listen to people just don't don't listen to people that talk about adaptations like that i, I don't think um or with a grain of salt, right? With a grain of salt. Uh, do it yourself. You know how I said that this was a good season for ladies, helping out ladies? Oh, do it yourself is great. What a lovely original series. I could have done with the two core of this. Um, first thing I will say is the main character's name is Yua Serafu. Yua Serafu, yourself is the first of many puns in this show. Uh, a show that is full of wonderful puns and silliness. Uh, what happens when a very clumsy, good-hearted, smart lady uh, 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 joins the DIY club? Well, we find out that do DIY stands for do-it-yourself. But also, you do it yourself with a bunch of other people. Weird fun people from a variety of backgrounds um, coming together to the simplest of premises. There are not enough members of the DIY club. So let's build things ourselves in order to attract people to join the club. And they get members while they're trying to do that. And that's the season. The season is let's make stuff and, and in the end, let's make a really cool thing in order to get people to come in and it's cozy and you can learn some stuff uh, and they drill in safety all the time and they're people that want to help the Sundere character is so obviously Sundere and everyone is aware that she is Sundere um uh yes good job indeed um one of my my only complaint about this show is that uh the uh the blonde here who is American uh, who they named Jobco because her name is Queen Elizabeth the Seventh. There's an there's another part to that name. Uh, she does not like her name, so they nickname her Jobco because she's a good job. Uh, she is American, and she is a native English speaker who has learned Japanese. And the voice actress is not a native English speaker. And look. There, there's a thing in some of these shows where they like to be like character. Oh, she's British, or or oh, she lived in Britain, so she says some English words sometimes. Or she's German and Japanese, and so she has a German accent on her Japan and Japanese pronunciation. Like you, I can just let that go. Jobco is supposed to be American, and her English is not great, and that is not. The fault of the voice actress, that is the fault of the person that, the, the committee or person that hired that voice actress. They made a casting mistake, in my opinion of it. Um, yes. Um, also, this show is, I would not call this, this, this show does not have subtext, uh, uh, subtext, of, like queer subtext. This is not a show with queer subtext. They are not teasing you with the idea that maybe these girls like each other, even though there are the only men in this show are like w one character's dad. Um, they're, they're not trying to tease you with anything like that. Also, if, if you told me that there was fan fiction about Pirin uh, and uh, Serafu falling in love, I would believe you uh, because their relationship is beautiful. Uh, hello, welcome, Lysanders. Uh, we're talking about Do It Yourself, one of my favorite shows this season. Um, anyway, 
It's on Crunchyroll. It's lovely if you want a very chill, fun slice of life that also has like a little bit of future tech in it that they like, they only include future tech, I think, to make the DIY feel even more homey, but it's a, uh, and cozy, but it's a lovely little series. Um, and all the characterization are, are is great. And it's just like, there's just like, yeah, it's cute and fun. And then you have like a lovely, the, the minorest of characters, like who's just like made friends and she has someone to talk to about the manga that she likes and the light novels that she reads because she finds a kindred, it's a lot of kindred spirits. Um, and I think it's totally worth checking out. Um, I did not watch Encouragement of Climb Next Summit because I have not seen any of the other seasons of Encouragement of Climb. Um, this is a slice of life kind of like sporty show, um, but I have not. I have not watched any of the seasons. It is on my list of things to maybe try out in 2023. I don't know if I ever will, but um, I've heard good things. I just, it didn't, yeah. Um, Fukudono Guild, an anime so horny, they didn't bother giving it an English name because why would High Dive promote this as one of their series if you are aware of this series it is because you knew you were gonna watch it high dive occasionally crunchyroll but mostly high dive high dive is kind of taking the, the position of the place where for the horny shit this is where the horny shit lives um not all, all horny shows but a lot most horny shows um anyway a dude wants to quit being an adventurer because his one of his former fr or his old friend got married and he's just like, I've never met any ladies. I'm never going to get married. But instead he gets roped into being like a trainer for up and coming adventurers who are all ladies who all get into awkward situations that include, you, you know what those awkward situations are. Opportunities for fan service. Um, yeah, Tony. High Dive has like cool, weird niche stuff that rules. Um... Uh, I am going to allow this word. I won't say it, but I will allow that. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm alluding to some stuff, uh, about this show, but yeah. Uh, imagine what kind of monsters would, would attack young ladies in a way that would be titillating for the viewer and embarrassing for the main character. Um, I have read two chapters of this manga and I was like, nah, I'm good. Um, now, um, I should just point out that um, uh, Crunchyroll ha certainly has put up some stuff that is adult in, in, in orientation. Um, yeah. But also, High Dive is where a lot of it lives. Especially now that Crunchyroll and Funimation are, you know, one thing. High Dive is going to be picking up these. Uh, I'm actually surprised I didn't hear more about season four of Golden Kamui. Um, I kind of gave up on this show probably back in like season two. It's a lot. It's very good about what it does. And it's got a sense of humor that I can appreciate. But it, I just... This is, a, this is a weird thing to say. The seasons come out too fast. Give me time to breathe. I feel like this show, like, there's always a new season of the show immediately. Um, and I'm just like, I didn't get caught up on... I'm still, like I said, I'm still partway through season two. I don't think I'll ever get caught up on the show. Um, but it's just like, damn, why does this show keep getting seasons? I mean, it's good, but yeah. Uh, I did not watch... Um, or there were some production issues this season, but didn't watch it. Yeah, I don't know. Um... I did not watch Housing Complex C. I believe this was uh, Adult Swim. This was, yeah, this was an Adult Swim show and HBO Max. Um, I did not watch this. Uh, horror is not really my thing. Look, the idea of a four-part mini series on Adult Swim, that sounds cool. I don't know. Uh, apparently, some people that like to vote on if they like shows or not on AIM chart, 
did not appreciate it, but I don't, I don't know what to tell you on it. Uh, I'm the villainous, so I'm taming the final boss. Uh, I finished this show. This is a weird one. I have not read the, the light novel, so I do not know if the light novel is um, in any way similar to the anime adaptation. Here's the thing about the anime adaptation. Uh, a lot of those Delta Swim shows look cool, but didn't get a chance to see. Oh, yeah, the Shenmue dub. Um, here's the thing about I'm the villain of Sonic Taming the Final Boss. The f- it's, it's an Otome game thing, right? So it is a girl suddenly realizes, oh, I'm the villainous in a dating game, uh, uh, RPG. Okay. Um, the, I'll tell you this, the course of these 12 episodes, uh, covers the events of game one, game two, and the fan game three, uh, the fan made Dojin game. So that's 12 episodes. And like, you can imagine if you're covering three lengths of a, of an RPG in 12 episodes, these aren't real RPGs, but mind you, but still, that means the first video game is finished by episode four. And I don't know if this anime adaptation was like, we're never getting another season, we're going to adapt all of it. Or if the light novel really moves that fast, but it moves too fucking fast. Like, they dump in episode like two or three, six minor characters. I am not joking with you. The show is just like, well, you know, even though she's the villainous, she has a bunch of dudes that think she's great that will help her out. There's like the reporter and the guy that is also a noble that see, clearly has a crush on her. And the uh, the doctor and like the young boy farmer and then like two other dudes. And it literally is in like two minutes. You're just like, well, you know, there's all these guys. And it's like, I don't know that. What the fuck? And again, maybe the light novel just dumps that in there um, because our main character knows all this. Um, some of it is very cute and fun. Uh, Almond and Ribbon, uh, who are the uh, the crow demon and the um, Fenrir demon, uh, the little, are, are cute and fun. Almond the crow is a great supporting character, uh, which is a fun thing that I get to say. But yeah, Almond rules. Um their relationship is fun. The other minor characters are interesting. And then it's like, okay, we finished the first game. Now we're going to take you to the second game, which introduces a bunch of new characters. Uh, by the end of it, I think the reverse harem has like 12 dudes in it. And I shouldn't use reverse harem because it shouldn't be gendered. The harem by the end of it is like 12 dudes and it, and I think one lady. Maybe two ladies by the end of it. It's a lot. Um, I would say read the light novel uh, because this anime is fine. It's an isekai. I was going to watch it. There's only, I think, one isekai this season I didn't watch, but nothing spectacular. Oh, also, one last thing. I'm the villainous. Um, the the lead actress in the series does the opening song, and that's a mistake because she's not a great singer, and it's a bummer. They didn't need to do that shit. They could have pivoted a different in a different direction uh but yeah she's not up to snuff on that um i've somehow gotten stronger when i improved my farming related skills i stopped this is another um it's not an isekai but it is an overpowered main character a guy that leveled up his farming skills so much that he ended up being strong in everything else and he all he wants to do is farm but he keeps having to be an adventurer uh, I stopped watching this a couple of episodes in because it just kind of is meh and the animation is terrible. This is Studio A Cat putting in Studio C or D level um, uh, cat talent because boy, oh boy, this is an awful looking anime. It's really not good. Um, I didn't finish it. I know a spoiler from the manga that explains this dude like backstory wise and it's bad and i don't know if you even got to that in the anime adaptation or not but like this should be very low on your oh should i watch this list because like eh. even if you like overpowered main character schlock like i do i don't know about this one you could do better uh did not watch this i have not watched any of the idolish seven uh did not watch this 
because I did not watch season one of uh, Kane Cole. Um, I be- Is this... Yeah. Oh, this is one of them... F- yeah. This is one of them girls that, that are machines of, uh, uh, like, jets and boats and stuff. It's one of them. It's one of those kind of shows. I don't get those shows. Never have. That's not true. I do like Rail Roman-esque. A three-minute episode uh, uh, series about girls that are AI personifications of different train routes in Japan that all have a conference to learn about one another and some fall in love. I liked Rail Romanesque because it's terrible in a good way. I don't, I have never had an affinity for girls who are jets or girls who are boats or girls who are tanks. Just not my, not my jam. Um, Legend of Mana, the Teardrop Crystal. I have not watched any of this. I have heard nothing about this. It's on Crunchyroll. That's news to me. Uh, Love Flops. So, I promise I'm going to find out how Love Love Flops ends. And I'm going to talk about it in a future stream. It won't be on a video. But I promise you, there is a twist in Love Flops that has something to do with this tag, the sci-fi tag. And I am interested to see how the show pays off its enor- unbelievable fucking like bait and switch. If you're interested, um, uh, Mother's Basement has a, has, has a discussion on it in one of the previous videos. I can't remember which one. It might be in the garbage of the fall season garbage 2022. Uh, but Mother's Basement is the person that clued me into the fact that Love Flops is like a very bad, stupid sitcom, like situation comedy, romantic comedy, uh, harem thing that has all, it's just, it's all tropes. But then at a certain point just goes, hey, actually, this is what the show is about. Um, and I am interested in finding out if it undoes that twist or how it pays off the twist in the show. I do not know the, have the answer to that. So I cannot tell you. But I can tell you that this show apparently goes places. But yes, uh, uh, Mother's Basement did a whole episode on this and where it goes. It might have been a whole episode and not part of Trash. I can't remember. But yeah, this is um, apparently goes places and I want to know where it goes. So I will, I will report on that. I think for this Saturday stream. Um, I'll probably do that. Management of a Novice Alchemist. Uh, I believe this is the last of the Girls Doing Things shows this season. Um, and that's kind of... No, that's, uh, that's harsh to say. So, this is a weird statement to make. I am surprised that a show titled Management of a Novice Alchemist was so hell-bent on ramming down your throats the idea that actually capitalism is the solution to our problems. Because it is, it is about a young girl trying her best to open up an alchemy shop on the frontier and make it a success. And that is the, pl- the thing. But along the way, she tries to like improve the town by having like products that they can sell and she's always looking for a way to like make life easier for the gatherers who are basically hunters uh, or adventurers um but also make a profit and like yeah it is at one part about young ladies coming together figuring things out uh and also the fact that our main character is pretty overpowered but it's also about like not just the evils of capitalism, but also the benefits of capitalism. And it's a weird fucking show because of that. Um, I like it. I don't know if I recommend it. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I wouldn't say like, you gotta watch it. It's cute. I think like the girls are cute and fun. And, uh, I want to know more about Olivia, the, the, the teacher of, uh, Cyrus of the main character. Cause she seemed cool as hell, but yeah, I don't know. Also, there's like a um, a revelation. I wouldn't call it a twist. There's a revelation about the guiding plot of the show that comes late that feels like a big old fucking cop out and also doesn't make sense, which is fun. So if you're going to be a big twist, at least make it make sense. Um, 
Uh, this one, I don't believe anyone has picked up. Yeah, this is a kid show. Hey, guess what? It's hard to see a lot of kid shows unless they are brand merchandise machines. They don't get subtitled. This show did not get picked up. I don't know anything about it. Uh, Mob Psycho 100 Season 3, the finale of Mob Psycho. This is the third and final season. It completes the story of Mob Psycho Season 3. Our boy Mob. Good things happen to our boy. Bad things happen. Good things happen. Our little boy grew up and... We love him for it. Just a just a good boy trying his best. And hey, you know how like there's some relatable in Bochi? Um, I, actually, Bochi was relatable, but Mob Psycho 100 Season 3 is the most relatable show this season for me anyway. Because, um, oh boy, hits you right in the heart and in the um, self-doubt uh, uh, area of your brain. Um, I can't say enough good things about it. Bones is one of my favorite studios. They put so much love and care into all three seasons of this show. It is a beautiful adaptation. Um, and you root for, like, you root for Mob. First, he's just a weird little guy in season one. But as the seasons progress, he becomes, like, like just, like, a, somebody that you really want to root for. And you want good things to happen for him. You want the best things to happen for him. And, like, I know some people are like, oh, my favorite parts of the show are when he, like, loses control. And he just starts, like, being a badass and, like, being devastating. And, like, the whole point of this show is you don't want to fucking do that. It's not good for anyone. In fact, it's very bad when that happens. And this season three goes out of its way to be, like, yeah, like, it's understandable why that happens, but it ain't great. Well done. So well done. What a lovely show. Mob Psycho Season 3. 100 Season 3. Um, okay, so Episode 12 of Witch for Mercury is not out yet. At the time of this recording, we have not seen uh, that. And in fact, by the time that this comes out, we won't have seen that. Because they're taking another week off. Uh... This show is dealing with the fact that it is in a popular time slot, but that popular time slot has Christmas programming or New Year's programming. Um, it is a beautiful Gundam show. Uh, I am a Gundam aficionado. I am a Gundam fan. I have been for many, many years. Um, is Witch from Mercury my favorite Gundam series? No. Is it my favorite modern Gundam series? Maybe. It might have supplanted Iron-Blooded Orphans as my favorite modern Gundam series. And by modern, uh, in Iron-Blooded Orphans is now kind of old. But, like, you know what I mean. Like, when I think of old Gundam, I think of, like, the Gundam that got me into Gundam. Like, Wing is still my favorite Gundam. And it always will be my favorite Gundam. Uh, Gundam Wing will never be replaced by another series. Which Mercury is very fucking good. Uh... So, I will say this. Uh, you don't have to see the prologue. You should see the prologue. It's available on YouTube. Um, the music is... One of the best things about this show is the battle themes. They are beautiful and help sell the action. There are episodes without cool Gundam fights. Some people don't like that it's set at a school. I think it is a great way to have conflict. Uh, some people want a, a big glorious epic battle between countries or continents or colonies i like the idea that that this series is saying hey you know how it's always like war is bad and it's the fault of humanity for getting into war well what if instead of countries or colonies it's corporations that feels like pretty damn modern and really on the nose but a lot of people watch gundam series and it they need to be just hit on the head with stuff. Because uh, they can't get past cool mechs. And also, cool mechs is a duality of Gundam. Mechs, like, Gundams are bad. And in this show, explicitly, they are like, Gundams are bad. And part of the show is saying, well, all mechs are bad. 
And Gundams could be good. Huh? But you have to, like, understand that, like, yeah, all mechs are bad. And also, sometimes mechs are cool as hell. Uh, it is Wow Cool Robot indeed goes foul. The Wow Co- Cool Robot meme. Uh, yes. Also, relatable. Suleta. Raised inside a Gundam. Uh, suddenly being with people and have it, having friends and having self-doubt about friendship and doing all. She is compressing all of uh, and dealing with people who uh, hate her for no good reason and people who are jealous of her and people who grow to accept her and dealing with all of that in a very short period of time uh, and is just not fucking figuring it out as well as she would like. Uh, I will also say episode 11 finally starts moving up the queerness of it and pushing the queerness of it just to take, just to separate characters in a way that sucks shit. I don't like that. There were so many episodes where you could have any kind of progress in the relationship there. And you were like, well, let's do it right before things get serious. I see what you're doing there, Gundam. I see you. It's still very good. It's still very, very good uh, and cute. There's a lot of cute. There's a lot of silly. There's plenty of cool. Um, if you like villains who are not actually villains, they're just big, dumb, likable uh, uh, guys. We got one of those. We got one of those starts as a villain and quickly becomes just one of the dudes um, because his just honor was in the wrong place, but uh, he's too dumb to, you know, like he's too dumb to be an actual villain. Like you got that. There's some weird technology and some people out for revenge and like all kinds of good shit. Uh, again, it's beautifully rendered. The mechs look awesome. Uh, but yeah, shout outs to Ghoul. I did not think that I would come to appreciate Ghoul. I thought Ghoul was introduced just to be defeated and that would be the end of ghoul but nope they're keeping ghoul around for a while we'll see um it's fucking great and i got another episode left because i got time so the uh uh yeah bob um anyway we'll move on more than a more than a married couple but not lovers haven't watched this don't know anything about it it is a comedy oh wait no i know what this is yeah this just seems like this just seems like a porn plot but instead it's a horny romance comedy yeah yeah no no thanks i'm good uh move love alternative season two the second season of move love alternative truncated because i have done this before and i can't keep doing this a reminder of what move love alternative is move love is basically the move love is a romantic comedy um that uh, a visual novel part one of the first disc is just a romantic comedy visual novel part two is the alternate reality version of it Uh, where it's now a mech series and it's in an alternate world and everything is similar but different and our main character is like remembering like what doesn't understand what happened it doesn't know why he crossed dimensions and is a an unbelievable tonal shift and then love love alternative uh is the second disc in the visual novel series which says what if Everything fucking terrible happened in Love Love uh, um, uh, Part 2. What if that character traveled back in time and has memories of what happened? Uh, also, the first episode of Season 1 of Love Love is a tonal episode that has nothing to do with any of the characters. It's just setting the world, and none of that episode matters. But it does introduce a cool character, and you're just like, what? what? Never mind. It, never mind. The show is actually about this fucking dude. Um, it's wild and weird and a mech show, and I wish that it was good, but I don't think it is. Um, but there are Move Love fans that are so happy to have Move Love. Also, there's a side series that takes place in the world, uh, that came out like six years ago that is set in the, in the world of Move Love, but, but it's completely different. 
And there are fucking three production company names here. So that probably tell you something about it. And I think I might be done talking about Muv Love until if there's a third Muv Love alternative season. I don't know. Maybe there will be. And then I'll have to explain it all again two more times. My Hero Academia Season 6. Uh, this is a two core. Uh, shit is fucking happening, y'all. And not like, hey, let's follow a bunch of villains and try to like... The thing that happens in modern shonen, where the mangaka gets weirdly tired of the cool characters that he has made and instead focuses on the cool anti-heroes that aren't anti-heroes, they're fucking villains, and started focusing on those characters, that shit's done, now it's war, the bad guys are bad again, except for a couple that aren't, because, of course, but the good guys are at a fucking disadvantage, uh, and doing their goddamn best. Uh, and hey, at this point, I can tell you, Deku is Spider-Man. You know how All Might is, this is not new, by the way. This is not new within the anime and not been new in the manga for a long time. But you know how uh, All Might is Superman? Deku is Spider-Man, literally Spider-Man, because now he has cool whips. He has cool energy whips and can swing around he was always spider-man because he was always peter parker but now he's fucking legitimately spider-man and i love that and deku's getting some cool shit and people are stepping up and it's not my favorite season of my Hero academia but it's good and i love that it is not that it is seasonal and not even with a two core i love that it is that and not um uh like you know 42 episodes in a year or something um, it's not continuous like Baruto or One Piece. It's still good. Uh, but yeah, at this point, I don't know. Go back and watch more My Hero Academia if you stopped watching it. Because like, if you did, if you got bored during season four, keep going. If you got bored during season five, just please keep going. Season six has been great. If you got bored during season three, I don't know what to tell you because that's a great season. My Master Has No Tail is a great premise of a show that I did not watch. Uh... High Dive had it. Great. Um, they got to get an icon for High Dive. I need, I need an icon there so I can quickly see. Uh, My Master Has No Tail is like a fun premise of a Tanuki, you know, doing fun stuff. But I didn't watch it, so I don't, I don't know. Pop Team Epic Season 2. Holy shit. They fucking... First off, they made Pop Team Epic Season 2. Um... And it's fucking great. And I don't... It's so weird. It's so weird. Um, please see season 1.5 of Pop Team Epic, which is uh, Gal and Dino. This is my opportunity to tell you, the person that liked Pop Team Epic seasons 1 and 2, that you didn't watch Gal and Dino. Now, part of that is not your fault, because Gal and Dino came out um, during the pandemic. And so it, some episodes came out and they stopped production, pr uh, production. And then like a season and a half later, the rest of it came out and it didn't get any promotion because that's the problem with shows that go away and come back is the marketing team already spent the budget on that show. They're not going to spend more money on a show they already promoted. So it's dead in the water when it comes back. Gal and Dino is an animated show based on a manga. The first half of the episode is animated, and it's fun. The second half is live action, and it's all made by the same people that make Pop Team Epic. And there are characters from Pop Team Epic that show up in Gal and Dino in the second half, which is a live action thing that goes off the rails, and there's a Death Note thing, just like in Pop Team Epic. And it's unbelievably bizarre and beautiful and great. And at one point... A bunch of stuff just happens indoors and it's very clear because they, there was another like lockdown and so they just started shooting stuff on a closed set and it's weird and great so gal and dino is is pop team epic season 1.5 but season two there's some gundam shit it's fucking dead on and perfect uh there's an unbelievably beautiful send up of like um all kind like multiple send ups of like beautifully done 
um, of the like, you know, the Power Rangers themed kind of shows. Uh, Yakuza voice actors are in it. It's beautiful. Um, yeah. So Pop Team Epic, Pop Team Epic is what you remember Excel Saga being. If you are an old like me, it's not what a Cell Saga was, because Excel Saga was like a Saturday morning cartoon anime with lots of in jokes, but it's actually not great. Pop Team Epic is what you remember Excel Saga being. Uh, is that it is bonkers and wonderful and great and nonsense. And again, just like cool so sometimes pop team epic is unbelievably cool and it's just like fuck you you can't be this cool you're supposed to be goofy and weird so good so so good um i will say this pop team epic season two uh i believe uh, uh is not on my top 10 list for the year, which is coming out um, next year. I'll be putting that out on January 16th. I'll be putting out my top 10 list because I want to wait for, uh, I want to wait for G-Witch to be done before I even start really working on the list. But yeah, um, I will tell you that Pop Team Epic Season 2 is number like 12 or 11 on my top 10. It did not make the top 10, um, but it's great. It's one of my favorite shows this season. But yeah, it just didn't make the, the top 10. Uh, Raven of the Inner Palace, I did not watch because I uh, I read some of this light novel and didn't really like it. So I did not watch this. Uh, I know some people that enjoyed it. Uh, Reincarnated as a Sword. Season 2 is coming. Season 1 ends on a cliffhanger. Thank God Season 2 is coming. Because Season 1 ends on just like, and now this guy's here to fight you later and you're like and then they're like oh yeah see we're doing a season two don't worry about it um this isn't part of the this is a post uh modern isekai uh the history of isekai uh, again short history of isekai you have your um uh things that are ref the things that are, are encouraged and uh, uh um uh exist because of alice in wonderland uh which have ladies young ladies as your as your leads um then uh, the modern isekai is the okay well let's do it power fantasy let's do harem stuff let's take let's do some dudes let's make it the overpowered main characters um uh, which start with light novels and manga and then become anime and then sword out online which is a death game not an isekai but whatever um uh uh no matter what that's not it's a death game anime but it is but it is a foundation of modern isekai uh and then you have your postmodern isekai what if an isekai, but a spider? What if an isekai by a vending machine, a slime, a hot spring? And in this case, what if you died and you got reborn in a fantasy world, but you're a sword? And then a young, great cat lady, cat girl, um, uh, named Fran, who is just the best. She's best girl for the year. Just a fantastic new character. What if Fran uh, uh, decides that you are the coolest thing in the world? You are, you are her savior as you're a talking cool sword. But also, Fran just thinks that her teacher is the fucking best. And I love that for Fran. Fran just really just wants people to think her sword is cool. Um, and she's great. Um, yeah, sword Dan. Yeah, she loves curry. She wants more curry. Uh, there's a, an annoying character that it gets introduced late in the se season that then eventually gets some justification. There's like some weird tacked on shit that like... Should the groundwork should have been laid down and works better in the manga than it does in the anime? It's still a very pleasant anime. It is like if you're gonna watch an isekai this season, this is probably the one. It's not near the top of isekais from the season because there's a lot of good isekai this year. Um, but it's good, I think it's enjoyable. Um, uh, yeah, it is. Um, it's I knew it was going to be a good adaptation after the first episode. It exceeded my expectations. Um, uh, and it is, a, it is a lovely little series. Uh, all right, we're going to do it right here. Okay. Uh, we are almost done with the fall. Uh, I did not watch Shinobi no Ito. Uh, Itoki? Um, 
this premise seemed like something I did not want to watch. Uh, hey, a bumbling goof, just like fine enough milk toast MC, is actually uh, an heir to a secret ninja or uh, uh, village. But also there are other ninjas, and all the ninjas hate other ninjas and want to fight ninjas, and he's got to be great uh, to protect himself because otherwise he's dead. And also he now has responsibility, and he's got to be a cool ninja and go to ninja school. And I and the girl that's protecting him probably wants to date him I, or doesn't. Uh, who knows? But yeah, I'm good. I didn't need to see that. Um, I'm just good. It just feels like it feels like an anime adaptation that didn't need to happen. You know what I mean? Uh, Spy Family Core Two. This is the second half of the first season of Spy Family. Season two and a movie are coming. Don't worry. Um, first off, I love Spy Family. I think Spy Family is great. This this gave us Bond. We finally got the dog. We finally completed the the family unit of. Uh, the spy uh, dad, the assassin mom, the psychic uh, uh, daughter, and the telepathic dog. Uh, or sorry, the future seeing dog. The future seeing dog uh, and the telepathic daughter. Uh, we now completed the family sci-fi unit. Um, here's the thing. Maybe this show didn't need to be a two core maybe we didn't need 25 episodes of this show because when you are adapting a manga to an anime you can get 12 episodes out of the show no problem because uh the action is built in a manga to to be building until the first act climax or the second act climax to encourage people to continue to buy your manga. Once you've completed that, the story continues, but like you get some episodes that just don't, you know, or manga chap chapters that don't really complete anything. They're just continuing the story. You got to keep going, right? Because you now you have to keep making more of it monthly or weekly or whatever. 25 episodes, you got some great arcs in the first half. A big arc in the sec the first part of the second half. And then a bunch of episodes to fill out. Did it need to be 13 episodes? I don't think it did. Because once you're kicking a... Once you're like kicking a bomb off of a dog so that it doesn't explode on the dog. A underground tennis match doesn't really compete in my opinion and it's a bit of diminishing returns now you get more romance stuff you get more fun stuff you get a lot more Anya being cute you get Anya friendship episodes which is lovely you get a Frankie episode about him trying to like figure out how to ask someone out on a date which just feels like oof oofta Oof to Frankie. Um, I think Spy Family rules. I think combining the two parts of the seasons, you end up with a fantastic anime. But I think people who are going to come to the show later are going to be like, that was weird, right? Like, if you come to the show and get caught up before season two, you're going to be like, those last couple episodes feel like, I don't know. I didn't really need so much dedicated to Nightfall. I don't know. It's weird. I think it's a fantastic show, um, but I uh, overall, uh, I guess my sense is um, it, it it overstayed its welcome a little bit, just a little bit. Okay, um, uh, Eminence and Shadow is not over. This is a two core. They're getting 20 episodes for Eminence and Shadow. This is the Isagai. I did not watch this season. Um, uh, I will say, uh, I have no real interest in this. I, I've never been interested in the manga. Uh, the idea of a guy that is like an edgelord that is trying to set up a world, like fantasy, fa he fantasizes about a world where he is an edgelord. 
Uh, and then the reality catches up with his fantasies and it turns out all the stuff he's been making up is real. It seems like nonsense. And then add in stuff that apparently wasn't in the manga, but was in the light novel that gets put in the anime adaptation of the fact that before he is isekai he is basically living out a power fantasy as being kick-ass, the character kick-ass. Um... And that stuff isn't in the manga adaptation, or it wasn't in the beginning of the manga adaptation, uh, but he's in the light novel and then is in the anime. So he's just like, hey, what if Kick-Ass got isekai And he's just like, okay? I don't know. I think if I was a teen, I would think this show rules. If you like it and you're not a teen, that's also okay. Again, I just think that I have no interest in this particular series. Uh... Because I just kind of don't have any interest in Edgelords as main characters. Uh, yeah, so that's just my opinion on uh, Eminence and Shadow. Um, the Human cr uh, Crazy University, I did not watch at all. I don't know what that is. It's a weird name. Look, yeah, I was just like, nah, I'm good. Uh, the Little Lies We All Tell, I did not watch this. I didn't. I don't even know what this is. You would think that um, I would watch uh, another like girls doing things show. But then I read this synopsis. Uh, they may seem like orders to second year junior high school students at first glance, but they are a space pilot, a ninja without a clan, a girl with supernatural powers, and a boy in girls clothes. And I was like, you know what? If someone I respect says this show rules, I'll check it out. That did not happen. So I did not check that out. Uh, two year eternity season two, uh, is we are in the middle of two year eternity season two. They're getting 20 episodes. Um, I did not watch season one. This is, this is a show that apparently is fantastic, but I will never watch it because the majority of characters in the, in this show are introduced so that you will grow to like them and they'd be sad when they die. So that the main character can learn things. And that just does not appeal to me. Just not, to, just not appeal to me at all. Uh, USA Yatsura 2022 is a good, it's ongoing, it is a good adaptation of USA Yatsura, a show that maybe is important, is incredibly important for the, the prototypical, like, this is not the first anime where you have a dumb as dirt main character who should not be with the incredibly attractive female lead uh, and often does not want to be with her until he does. This is not the first anime to do it, but this is the one that like is the blueprint for all of those shows. It having a modern remake is very cool. I don't know if I will continue to watch it. I'm a couple episodes behind on it, but I appreciate that it exists. That's pretty much it. And David Production always does a good job with shows like this. Um, Uzaki-chan wants to hang out season two. This is also uh, called Uzaki-chan wants to hang out double. Um, is it as good as the first season? No. Is it good? Yes. This is the romantic comedy that I would uh, I would suggest for this season if you if you want to check it one out. Um, I think Uzaki-chan wants to hang out is a really fun show. Um, uh, I think that the thing about Izaki chan that is fun is that the main characters are in college. Therefore, their sexual hijink antics. Um, not that they're sexual with each other, but you know what I mean. They're the like etchy elements of it. They're college students doing this. Um, the addition, the further addition of more members of Uzaki's family, of Hana's family, is an interesting thing. There's a there's a, a lot of misunderstandings and confusion and people not knowing who each other are that is fun. There is an initial D reference in this season, so you know I'm a fan of that. I love a good initial D reference out of nowhere. Um, uh, the first episode is a little confusing because the first episode is like... Basically, the first episode is like, hey, here's what Uzaki-chan season one was. But it tells it a little out of order and it's kind of jarring. Uh, but you'll pick it up 
right away. Uh, this season does have an episode that is not from the manga. That is a product placement episode. This time it is about a indoor water park. Whereas the first season, there's a whole episode where they go to the hometown of the guy who made Detective Conan. Uh, who's na the name of the town, I cannot remember. But that town paid for an episode of this anime. That's part of the reason why this anime exists. Is because th it, both seasons, they have gotten someone to pay for an episode. Uh, this time around, it was this real place. And... The backgrounds of this real place were done in watercolor based on actual real photos that you can find online. And it's kind of ridiculous, uh, but also great. Uh, Zeke Jen wants to hang out. It's still a fun show about fun characters. Uh, and it is a show where one of the main characters teases the other character, but I don't hate it, surprisingly. Because I generally do hate that, but I don't hate it in this case. Um... Vaz Rock the Animation uh, is not a show that I saw. I did not see anything about Vaz Rock the Animation. Welcome to Demon School Irmakun Season 3. The isekai that the mangaka says is not an isekai. He says it's not an isekai because it's not a different world. It's the demon world, but it's on the same earth as where Irma is from. But I'm like, oh, so he goes from regular old Japan to the demon world. To me, that's an isekai, but whatever. Um, uh, again, season two into season three makes a character who I never found that interesting important. Uh, this season does not have enough Clara, which is a big strike against it. Uh, Clara, who is uh, uh, my favorite ca supporting character in this show, she, does, she gets a, a fucking great episode, but she doesn't have enough good episodes. Um, everybody gets to do some cool stuff. We introduce a bunch of, uh, teachers and, uh, um, tutors, like personal tutors. Um, this show is a, is a two core. So we're, uh, 13 of 21 coming up. We have 12 episodes so far. Uh, the majority of this season has been this like festival. Um, so we had some fun stuff at the beginning, like the training arc. Now we're into the festival arc and then there'll probably be another thing at the end. I, if I remember correctly, we are getting close to, some characters from season two returning into season three, which is a bad thing plot wise, but it'll be fun. Um, it's so rare that comedies get so many episodes. Also, Ira is a great little guy. Just top tier, good little guy. So if you have not checked it out, go back, watch the original uh, first season. Um, it's fun. I don't like the music, uh, the opening themes. Um, but other than that, it's good. Uh, Yoamushi Pedal Limit Break. This is season five of Yoamushi Pedal. Remember way back uh, an hour and change ago when I said that there was a sports anime this season that I was watching with, about a good boy that originally just wanted to be in an anime club and now has friends and uh, rivalries and camaraderie and disappointment and, uh, and like a skill that he's great at. That's this show. Yaomushi Pedal has four complete seasons, movies that are just telling you about some of the seasons, and then also a movie that is like its own, like in universe story. Um, the first season is fucking perfect. This whole season so far, it's a two core, has been about half of a day of a bike race. Uh, it is so good. It, unbelievably good of just like rooting for the good guys finding respect in the rivals that aren't bad they're just from another school hating 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 the bad people it is unbelievably great please check it out this was one of my like in 2020 when i had a lot of free time and a lot of internal sadness um yellow mushy pedal was the show that i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna get really into this anime because there's like a lot of episodes of this anime and i got really into it and it's great uh, so good. Uh, shorts. I didn't watch any shorts, so we're just going to skip through this. Uh, we'll just speed through shorts. Uh, this is a show that I, I've watched a little bit sometimes. I find some episodes of, uh, Pui Pui Molkar. Because it's just, you can watch it without knowing what's going on. It's fun. Um, Lucifer and Biscuit Hammer did not watch because it's a terrible adaptation, as I talked about earlier. 
Um, uh, I definitely watched some of this the first time it was out years and years ago, but I don't know anything about the show. Uh, and I don't think I watched any movie. I did watch, I did watch, it's on Crunchyroll, uh, the laid back camp movie, which is good. Um, it, it's not perfect, but it is good. The laid back camp movie is on Crunchyroll and I recommend that. I did watch that, but that was from earlier in the, the year. Uh, this is a, what does this come out? Yes, that came out. And I need to see it. Kage Sama Love is War, the first kiss that never ends. Uh, boy, Kage Sama Love. Ooh, shit. Did, was, that, was that this year? Was Kage Sama Love is War season ultra romantic? Was that this year? Oh, no. That's not on my top 10 list right now. Oh, no. That was this year, wasn't it? Crap. Uh,. Yeah, that was this year. That was April to June. Oh, no. Oh, no. That That's not on my top 10 list right now. Oh, no. that. How did I fucking not put that on my top 10 list? Oh, sorry. Hold on. I have to add this to my top. This is now on the list, and I got to rework this list. Something's got to get cut. I'm not doing that now, but holy shit. I can't believe I didn't put Ultra Romantic on that oh my god I, this is a huge goof on my part friends how did i not put that there all right i think i know what gets cut sorry we'll get back into it anyway i didn't see this but i did see and loved that so god damn it god damn it i'm glad i now remembered that that wasn't on the list um again i didn't see any of this stuff i can't wait to watch the chair anime movie. How the fuck? This dude becomes a chair in the movie, early on in the movie, as far as I can tell. And there's an evil cat. And I got I gotta see it. I gotta see Suzume. Um Yeah, alright. I think we're Oh, this is uh this is coming to Crunchyroll. If it's not up now, it's coming soon, or maybe already up. I have not watched that time I got reincarnated as a slime in the movie Scarlet Bond. I will. It's not based on anything um, from the from the manga or the light novels, but like I'll still check it out. Uh, the first slam dunk, I did not see that, and no, I didn't see that. And then some OVAs. Uh, oh, this is we're gonna have to go through this because sometimes any chart lists. Netflix series, if everything from the Netflix series aired at once, it goes into ONAs or OVAs. If it goes weekly, um, then it will be in the regular season. So we got to go through here. Uh, this was the second half of Bastard. I did not watch it. I don't have Netflix right now. Um, so we'll just go through these ONAs and see. Didn't see that. I didn't see anything from Netflix in uh, that... that, that aired there in september for some reason they added this i have seen jojo's bizarre adventure stone ocean part two it, i'll say this um while i do think that a lot of characters in stone ocean are great i'm just waiting for the next jojo series this and golden wind are both okay but not enough they're not what i'm looking for i'm looking for my wacky races which is coming um, if you know, you know, uh, and see that they put out more of the, they put a mini episodes out of that and see that, uh, loop and zero. That's fun. Didn't see that. Uh, see any of this road of Naruto. I did watch road of Naruto studio Perot, uh, redid some of the most classic Naruto scenes in a nice long YouTube video with like new digital animation of classic Naruto stuff for the 20th anniversary of the Naruto anime. It's, it's good. I think it's good. Um, uh, uh, only other things I watched in fall were Dizzy Chariot and Pui Pui Molkar, both of which are fun. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, a bunch of nonsense. I can't, this thing is getting a fucking season two. Ugh. Gross. Uh, I did not watch that. Didn't watch any. 
Uh, Tiger and Bunny, I have not seen. Um, I never saw the original. Uh, Over the Moon for You, Uniform, I did watch that. Because because uh, Over the Moon for You is great. Okay, and then we're done with that. Um, we are going to get into uh, the next season here. We're finally going to get into the uh, the winter season. Real quick, we'll just do this for a second while I do that. Uh, you can follow along here on that, and then we'll go back into this. And then I'm just going to reply to my own tweet saying that we're talking about new shows. Oh, wow. We, we have recorded. This video has been an hour and 20 minutes recorded. That's not as long as some of these, but it's pretty long. All right. So we're going to go through these. Some of these shows I do know things about because I have read the manga or uh, perused the light novel or read the description beforehand. Some of these shows I don't know anything about. We're going through alphabetical order here. Um, uh, and we can see as the time of this recording, if it has been announced, if it has been picked up in any streaming service uh, for the United States. Um, this does not seem to be anything that would appeal to me. Um Lady Ninjas, Lady Ninjas, comedy, edgy, romance, supernatural. Uh, yeah, you're gonna give it a chance, says Doodle the Great. Yeah, I don't think I will be. Um, uh, yeah, the dude isn't even in this photo. Now, this is not the anime's fault. This is chosen by uh, Annie Chart, but the dude, the main character, is not in this photo. So, um, hell yeah, get into it. Watch the first season if you have not seen Bofuri. I, I generally don't like anime about VR games because it's never about the real world. It's always just about this VR world and there's no stakes, right? It's one thing if it's a death game, but if it's not a death game, there's not any stakes. But Boofery, I don't want to get hurt, so I'll max out my defense, is a slice of life action RPG series about a girl that just makes interesting choices in an in a MMORPG, and then like because of her weird choices, she grows like in power, but also just like makes great friends and encourages them to like try out weird other cool builds and like it's just an encouragement of like friendship and like being a goof and like doing your best and like even the the dude the older dude who's like kind of milk toast like he inadvertently gets a cool ability and a cool set of armor and he's like oh now i'm weird too oh okay uh there's a giant turtle as you can see in the photo that's just fun this is a turtle companion that get big and floats um, there's some mech stuff in it. There's like, she becomes a big monster and it is still cute. It's so fun. Bofuri is such a lovely series. Uh, I'm so excited that we have more of it. Uh, Silver Link's doing the second season again, which is great. Uh, it, Crunchyroll is picking it up, which good. I, one would expect them to, uh, recommended. Um, Buddy Daddies is a great name. Buddy Daddies by PA Works is an original story. PA Works does great originals. I am tentatively giving this a look. Uh, it has not been announced that anyone is picking this up. I am hoping that someone does. I'm hoping it's a high dive pickup. High dive, please. Buddy Daddies is just a very good name for like, I believe these are two crooks that accidentally end up in the charge of a cute young lady. And then hijinks ensue. But it's, yeah, it's a good pedigree of a good studio. And again, it's named Buddy Daddies. I'm going to watch the first episode. Uh, PA Works has been putting something weird in the water for the past couple of years. Totally. Uh, Bungo Stray Dogs Season 4. I gave up on Bungo Dogs somewhere in Season 2. If you love Bungo Dogs, uh, Bungo Stray Dogs, I should say, pardon me. Well, you're getting a fourth season. Uh, uh, yeah, it's going to be on Crunchyroll. Uh, please enjoy more Bungo Stray Dogs. Yeah, it just never, didn't really do anything for me. I gave, I watched the first season and the second season. I was like, eh, I think I'm good. 
Um, by the grace of the gods, season two. This is the first of the many, many, many isekai we'll be talking about. There's, I don't know how many. There's so much, and especially if you include Irmakun, the second half of Irmakun. There's so much, and uh, and Essence in the Shadows or whatever, uh, being a, a double. There's so much fucking isekai this season. By the grace of the gods, is very cute and fun as long as you forget a vital piece of information about it it's the story of a dude that worked hard but like never really got anywhere in his life because he just kind of got walked all over he died and he was given the chance to be reborn in a fantasy world and he's in a young boy's body but he's an adult and he's powerful and great and goes on some adventures and meets incredible people it's just that one of those people is a young lady that's basically his age and everyone's trying to set them up. And if you forget that he's an older man, he's a middle-aged man in a young boy's body, it's fine. But when you remember that he's like a 30-something dude in that body, it's bad. Now they're uh, jumping ahead. I believe that they are skipping over large portions of the manga. Uh they the anime adaptation here skips big sections of the manga which i read after i watched the first season um uh and like there's like characters that just aren't in it they there's a battle that in the manga or the anime is like really easy and in the manga is like brutal and like there there's a whole group of people just don't aren't in the anime adaptation at all it's weird um but i think they're skipping a bunch of the anime stuff to just get to the light novel parts that, that you know a time jump uh which should be interesting to see uh because i am caught up on the manga so it'll be interesting to see like where the show goes i'm gonna watch it i like it a lot so i'm gonna check it out campfire cooking in another world with my absurd skill is a pretty chill slice of life e um uh anime uh, uh sorry isekai um it continues the very strange and very fun idea that fantasy worlds would love Japanese cooking. There are so many fucking isekai where even if it's not about cooking, at some point they make like natto or something and, and everyone's just like, holy shit. Um, the thing that's great about this is uh, the wolf over here, immediately he's cooking something because he's got like, survival skills but they're not like cook like he's basically got like a catalog of stuff he can order and make food right this powerful beast shows up and he's just like hey i hear cooked meat is good give me some cooked meat and he likes what he got made and he's just like all right let's hang out there's a great slime named Shu. Shu can talk and is awesome and Shu is just great and then later, I don't even know if we'll get into the anime adaptation, but I can tell you, there's a tiny dragon that hangs out. So this dude just meets cool, mythical creatures. Uh, slimes aren't mythical creatures, but you know what I mean. Just because he makes good food, and they're like, yeah, we're going to hang out. It's honestly fun. It's a fun manga. I'm looking forward to this uh, anime adaptation. Um, uh, Cardfight Vanguard, never seen any of it. Uh, they're making more. Chilling in my 30s after getting fired from the Demon King's army is not an isekai. But it is a slice of life action series um, about a demon who's not a demon, uh, but he was accepted by the demons. He's kicked out. It's a banished story. In this case, it's banished from the, the demon army. And then what happens when you, like, end up accidentally saving a bunch of humans and they're just like hey hang out have you met my daughter would you like to become the new village chief and then a bunch of people that show up to make trouble or to just find daryl or accidentally get there there's a lot of action it's it's a slice of life but there is a lot of uh some action to it and a little bit of romance it's cute it's a fun manga that i've been reading i'll be checking it out um uh, chilling, chilling in my thirties is just a weird thing to say. Chilling in my thirties after getting fired from the Demon King's army, but yeah, it is uh, one of the this year 
many banished slash kicked uh, series. Um, D4 DJ All Mix, which is the second season of D4 DJ uh, First Mix. Did not watch the first one. Probably not going to watch the second mix. Uh, Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagataro, Second Attack. I like the name. I like Second Attack as the name. Um, I'm not big on anime where one character just teases another. And that's the whole thing. This is not my bag. Uh, like I said, I do like Zaku Chen wants to hang out. That's the exception to the rule. I did not watch the first season of this. I will not be watching the second season. If you like this show, fuck yeah, enjoy it. But not for me. Um, we've got the second half of the fourth season of... Excuse me, sorry. Of uh, Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon? Uh, this has not... This is coming to High Dive. I, I know it's coming to High Dive. High Dive has... Uh, is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls? I gave up on this show, like, part way... At a certain point... Um, Bell became a, like a, a, a Christ figure. And I was just like, no, nah, I'm good on this. I think, I think I'm good on this. It was one thing when he was just a good boy. And it's another when he becomes like the savior uh, of a whole race of people. And I was like, meh. Um, okay. It's an isekai where the, it's a, it's an Otome. It's, it's not Otome. Uh, Yes, Belb, uh, Belby. Um, Endo and Kobayashi Live, the latest on the Sundere villainous Lizonet. Uh, okay, so this is this is weird to say. It's not an isekai. It is an Otome game anime adaptation of, of a game, video game that doesn't. This is a. Otome game version of Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. It is a Otome game is playing out. The events of a game are playing out, but live commentary of the game is can be heard by one of the characters. It's a let's play where what if Link could hear uh, a let's player's thoughts while playing through a Zelda game. I guess that's the easiest way to say that, but it's a dating game, so I don't know. The villainous can hear the thoughts, and so it is going to change. Uh, oh, the fiance of the villainous, not the fiance. The fiance of the villainous. So basically, it allows this dude to understand that. Oh, this girl is a Sundere character. I did not recognize that. Um, it's a cool idea that I'm doing bad at explaining. But yeah, what if? Uh, what if a Let's Play could be heard by the char a character in the video game? I guess that's the easiest way to say it. I'm going to check this out. I don't know if it's going to be good, but I do like villainesses aren't really that much of a villain, and I think the premise is interesting. So I'll be checking this one out. Farming Life in Another World. So it's an isekai, so I will start what... I will start this series. I do not know if I will continue it, because I do try every isekai. There is something about this show. This is such a slice of life. Also, it's fucking horny as shit. And I think like that needs to be in this as a descriptor. Um, it's not super, super horny, but it's pretty horny. Um, because it's kind of like passed over about it. Anyway, it's another like dude gets a skill. Dude asks for a skill that's not amazing, but he gets an amazing version of that skill. Like, he just, like, I just want to farm. Like, we'll make you a god. We'll make you the king of the world. He's just like, I just want to, like, be able to, like, farm and be healthy. And they're like, great. We'll give you a, a perfect body and all this other stuff. And your your uh, hoe uh, to dig will be, like, per will, like, be able to destroy anything. Um, he just becomes overpowered. And it just, like, keeps adding new characters and new characters. Uh, I read the manga. It's very light. Uh, I'm surprised it's got an anime adaptation, honestly. Um, and it might end up being bad an uh, animation, but I'll, I'll be trying it. Uh, Flaglia is a... I do not know what this is. Oh, this is a mixed media project spanning anime and a musical. The anime side of the project is set in the present day, while the musical is set in the Middle Ages era. No thanks. 
Uh, giant beast of ours. This photo looks terrible. Uh, high dive is picking this up. Age of Swords, Heroes and Myths, Giant Beast, Creator of the Land, Human Stole the Land, Think of the Beasts. I'm not gonna... This... This is one of the most fucking generic-ass, anime-ass things. 20 and 2nd Kumi, who is chased by someone. Jiro and his friends then start to cover the secrets of the world. This is gonna be, like, one of my friends, like, secret favorite anime, but, like, I'm never gonna hear about it again. Giant Beasts of ours. Nah. Nah. There's too much shit that I'm watching. Speaking of stuff I'm going to be watching, it is another Slice of Life Isekai. Why are why are all of the Slice of Life Isekai out this season? Because they are. Uh, almost every Isekai this season is a Slice of Life chill anime. Um, handyman Sato in another world. He was a handyman in his previous life, and now he's a handyman. He was just like a dude. Um, but guess what? He's got real world Japanese knowledge and he fixes problems that no one else will handle uh, and then people really like him and he's got a good cast of characters it's a fun manga that I, that I enjoy uh, yeah uh, this is this is it look I said I'm gonna read I'm gonna watch all the isekai this is one I am genuinely looking forward to high card uh, I don't even know what this is oh did, wait did anybody pick this up oh crunchy picked it up good high card uh Oh, it's a betting game anime. I don't know. Eh, I don't think I don't think I'm good. Inspector. Um, I am pleased to say that there is a sequel to Inspector. I feel like uh, Crunchyroll originals get a bad rap because some of them are complete dog shit. Inspector is a great Crunchyroll original. Um, it is a, a show that was produced because Crunchyroll put money into it getting produced. Um, it is. Um, I didn't know it was going to be so monster of the week. It's like, it's not solving a problem right now. Uh, but the idea of that, like a, a, a guy that has some special abilities meets a girl. The only part of it I don't love is that she doesn't age. And so even though she's, the, they're the same age, she looks younger. I don't love that, but like, whatever it's, it is a detective like murder mystery series uh, about like an unlikely couple of weird humans solving monster problems for the monsters and also for humanity. And it's pretty great. Also, monsters are fucking scared shitless of the dude. Uh, check out the first season. I think it's totally worth watching. I'm going to be watching this one. Um, Epon, again, I did not... Uh, no, I'm sorry. This is not a sequel. It sounds like a sequel title. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to check this out. This is... I believe the only girls doing things show this season. So I, I should try it out. Um, but it is a sports show, which I am not super into. Maybe I'll be into girls trying to start a judo club. Maybe I'll be into that. Um, yeah, I think like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Maybe I'll, maybe we'll be into this. I don't know. I'm going to try it. Um, uh, Kena of the Great Snow Sea is an original that I have not seen any previews of. And, uh, okay, Ocean of Snow, uh, Chance Meeting to Kena and, uh, Leah, Young Moon of the Surface, sets off a chain of events, it'll change the fate of the world. That's a bad description that does not get me interested in this. Polygon Pictures does some good work. I, I will maybe check this out, but this will probably be like a... I actually heard this is good and watch it later kind of show. Uh, Kubo won't let me be invisible. I do like romantic comedy series. This is probably not the romantic comedy I'm going to be watching this season. Um, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of over it when the main character is just a milk toast dude that a special lady decides that she likes i'm kind of over that as a premise also i don't really love teasing as a as a thing you know what i mean like you got to be like a really actually genuinely good dude or accident prone or um actually very weird because you just jump to conclusions like you got to give me a little bit more than 
Uh, you're invisible. I don't know. Uh, Mandela Spirit Spirits, uh, Mono Katari. Um, no. No, nah, all right. I am all right. My life as in Inca Sun's dog. Inca Sun's dog. <sighs> I'm not going to watch this. Why is this at? Why? High dive? Come on, high dive. This is a fucking anime. This is an anime about a dude that is reborn, reincarnated as a dog. And you just see from his perspective. Attractive young ladies. Get out of here. You're in timeout, anime. Near Automata version 1.1a. Here's the thing. I think Nier is cool. I don't know if Nier needed an anime adaptation. I don't know if I'm going to watch this. Oh, it has a Facebook page. Fun. I don't know if I'm going to watch this, y'all. A1 Pictures... A1 Pictures does great work. Don't get me wrong. They are a great studio. This could be fantastic. Part of, I think, the reason why I like Nier is it's fun anime or fun video game bullshit. Does it translate to fun anime bullshit? I don't know. Um, okay. This is the this is the show that is uh, the... Uh, this is coming out soon, actually. Um, at, the at the time of this recording, we're six days away. At the time that this goes live, this episode is aired. This is the beginning of... This is the first show in the winter season. Uh, Ninja Fusion Adventurers Who Don't Believe in Humanity Will Save the World. This is an okay manga. I don't know if I'm going to be watching this. It is an action series. Um, it's... Uh, yeah, I like... It's a Banish show. It's one of the two Banish shows this season. It's a bunch of misfits like that were kicked out of their parties coming together and their shared distrust of other people and they find trust. It's okay. I don't know if I'm going to... I'm going to watch it probably because like I believe... Yeah, I believe it's a Monday show and Sunday Monday shows or sometimes there aren't a lot of them. So I'll probably start watching it. But this is definitely a show that feels like it'll be something that I, I bounce off of. Um, Onimai, I'm Now Your Sister... Uh, he was just a normal erotic game loving dude you know a normal erotic game loving dude until he woke up one morning as a woman turns out his mad scientist little sister tried out one of her new experiments on him with a disastrous outcome as far as uh, Marino is concerned Mary is determined to study him as he is determined to go back to his shut in game playing life and one thing's for sure, life is going to get a whole lot weirder from here on out. I'm, I'm okay. If, again, this is going in the, if someone I respect tells me, hey, this is actually really good. I'll check it out. Doodle's great. You're right. It doesn't say etchy, but I don't, I don't know. Uh... Nobody's picked this up because we do not have an English language for this. Uh, this is another like um, dumbass dude. It, a love story between a milk toast bland guy and a beautiful woman. Uh, can he just become a normal erotic game and love a girl? You're right. Why? Yes. Why can't he just be an erotic? You know? Yes. Totally. I agree. Uh, I don't know if anyone's picking this up. That's fine. I don't need to see that. Pocket Monsters. Uh, hell yeah. Here we go. Uh, it's a... Guess what, friends? Uh, this is a uh, reincarnation story. It's not an isekai. It's a reincarnation story. Um, this is a fine... Um, fine enough... Um, fine enough manga. I don't know. Um... Basically, it's like a girl, a guy gets reborn as a girl, and then he can become a cool knight. That's pretty it. Uh, uh, I don't know if I'm going to watch this. I like the manga enough. Uh, Revenger is like such a bad name 
for an original anime. Um, this looks terrible. The, the, the trailer I saw this looked god awful. Crunchyroll's picking it up. Good job. Um, hey, guess what? It's a fucking isekai. Um, um, so yeah, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's giving the world ability. Mysterious being loves her go back and forth between this world and isekai. Uh, she's trying to raise a bunch of money. It, this is a fun manga that I have read and enjoyed. Uh, oh, great. Yeah, Crunchyroll's picking up. That's good. Uh, I will be watching this. Uh, she, yeah, she can save. She's trying to save a bunch of money because she, her life has been shit. Um, and her parents are all dead and brother. And then she's now saving, trying to save money in a fantasy world for her good life in the real world, in her, the regular world. Not real world, regular world. It's fun. It's fun manga. I'll be watching saving eight eighty thousand gold in another world for my retirement. Sorcerer Seven Orphan Chaos in Urbarama. This is a sequel to Battle for Kim Luck. So I, yes, the third season. Sorcerer Stabber, Stabber Orphan should have stayed in the past. I tried to watch the remake of it, and it feels very old. I think getting the original voice actors makes it feel as old as it is and it does not need to be the continuing adventures of sorceress stabber orphan let orphan rest spy classroom i'm not gonna fucking watch this there's no fucking way i'm gonna watch the worst the most hopeless spy school like the the uh the bottom class in spy school the anime fucking no thanks Sugar Apple Fairy Tale. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to... Probably not going to watch that. Uh, Technoroid Overmind wins for best terrible anime name of 2023. We're over. We already have the best worst anime name, which is Technoroid Overmind. Uh, Doga Kobo makes some good stuff, but I, no, nah, I'm good. Weird Androids. It's a music show as well. Uh, and this show, yeah, uh, this show got, um, most of the studio got COVID. And so this got bumped from last year to this year. Uh, Spy Classroom is the first wave of comedy spy adventures that followed a spy family footsteps. Yeah. Um, so nobody's, t this comes out in a week at the time of this recording and no one has picked this up and I want someone to, cause I really like this manga. Um, uh, and I have to remember the English name of the manga. So hold on while I quickly do that because we just have the Japanese name. Um, and I don't remember what the English name is, but it is princesses in the title, uh, princess meets, uh, something like that. Uh, uh, meets, right. I'm looking it up on a uh, translation thing to see if I can find it. Uh, no, I can't find it. Princess meets genius. I think it is the title. Let's see if I can find this. Uh, I don't remember the English name of this anime. Um, so let's see here. Uh, let's quickly see if it's on here you can find that ah here we go it is uh the translation is the magical revolution of the reincarnated princess and the genius young lady it just rolls off the tongue uh the magical revolution of the reincarnated pr princess and the genius young lady uh i hope someone picks this up because it's a fun story it is an isekai so i would like to watch it because i watched all the isekais that are out there um but yeah it is a a girl that is like a weird nonsense person and then like uh but goes out of her way to save a girl that is like being painted as a villainous uh and their friendship that they get strikes up because of that and then there's like other things happening and uh that, that i'm just dealing with now in the manga that are really intriguing and it's a cool story and i hope someone picks this up and there's romance in here because 
it's apparently the light law the light novels the night novels the light novels get super queer not super present in the manga so i don't know if romance is the appropriate tag for this but there yeah there might be some fucking we might be getting some, uh, some queer lady romance isekai oh, i'm up for it um the fire hunter is a very bland title uh I have not read this novel. Uh, I do like that there is like flame demons and fire hunters. Here is the isekai. I know I will not be watching this season because I did not watch the first season of The Fruit of Evolution 2 before I knew it. My life had it made. I did not watch The Fruit of Evolution 1 because it. I did not enjoy the manga. So I did not watch the anime. It got a sequel. The Ice Guy and His Cool Female Colleague is uh, is one of the romantic comedies I'll be watching this season about a dude that if he gets like his emotions get out of control, ice and snow happen because he's uh, part, he's like the descendant of ice creatures, of ice maidens. Uh, and then he's like his co-worker is like, oh, I got a crush on her. That's a fun premise. I want to watch that. The Ice Blade Sorcerer Shall Rule the World. Um, this is a uh, overpowered main character show that I will be checking out because I think the manga is pretty good. Uh, this is just a fantasy world where this dude is just like, hey, what? What's going on with this guy? Um, actually, it's him. It's he, he, him. He's the strongest. He's acting like a goof, but he's actually very cool. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a try. Uh, the Legend of Heroes Trail of, of the Cold Steel Northern War. What a title. Hello, Lysander. We're talking about upcoming anime that's starting within a week. Um, I don't know anything about the Legend of Heroes Trails of the Cold Steel Northern War. Uh, I don't know the video game that it's based on. I do like that this guy's got a big fucking sword. I think that's pretty cool. But yeah, uh, I think I'm good. The Misfit of Demon King Academy 2. History's Strongest Demon King reincarnates and goes to school with his descendants. That is the sequel to The Misfit of Demon King Academy. History's Strongest Demon King and re reincarnates and goes to school with his descendants. Uh, this left with a big... Season 1 ended with a big like question mark. Uh, but there's, I have some questions, which is, wait, didn't this manga get canceled? Isn't it over? Also, wait, didn't the guy who was the voice actor for Misfit of Demon King Academy, he's not on this one because he like cheated on his voice actor or, and, and, uh, an idol wife and like, got disavowed and so there's a different voice actor if i remember correctly there's some fucking drama around this but yeah uh the first core of the second season oh it's gonna be two parts two cores uh but yeah i'm pretty sure that the oh the light novel is still going out but i'm pretty yes the manga was canceled uh the manga of the misfit demon king was canceled so it's based on the light novel which means I don't know. I'm caught up on the manga. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, but anyway, the first season ends with a big thing that is not resolved because, like, we think that a, a minor or a supporting character is one guy from his past, but it's not. And then one of the other minor characters, we her father, it's important to know who her father is and we don't know who her father is. So, like, this is another overpowered main character thing. I'm excited to see where this goes. I'll be watching it. But yeah, they're going to give it uh, two parts this year. Um, hey, guess what? It's another fucking Isekai. The reincarnation of the strongest exorcist in another world. I'm going to watch it. I like this uh, manga. I have not read the light novel, but I like the manga. Um, so this dude like lived in a... Uh, he, he was an exorcist. So he knows how to use like summoning and, and paper craft stuff to, to do magic. 
he ends up in a fantasy world and he just keeps doing that magic. Because he's just like, well, I'm an exorcist and I have demon contracts. So like, I don't know. And he should not be the strongest person in his fantasy world because he uses magic that no one else has any clue about. But he is. It's fine. It's a fine enough one. The supporting characters are fun. His be- his childhood best friend is great. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm going to keep watching this one. Um, and it does... Uh, the reincarnation of the strongest exorcist in another world does also play into the idea of like what it means to be a, the hero class. Like oh, you're destined to be a hero? What the fuck does that mean? Like, it plays with that in a way that I find interesting. So, yeah, I like that. Uh, the Tales of Outcasts. Um, I don't think I'm going to be checking this out. Um, yeah. This is like... Nah, nah. That just doesn't seem like it appeals to me. Uh, Vampire Dies in No Time Season 2. This is Madhouse putting this out. This is Madhouse's like comedy project. Um, the first season was fun. I don't know if I'm... This is a show that I'm not going to be watching weekly, but I will be getting caught up on episodes of The Vampire Dies in No Time Season 2. I will be like, every couple of weeks, I'll be like, oh, let me go get caught up on that show. But I'm not going to cover it weekly because it's fun. But like, uh, you know, it's a good comedy show. I like supporting comedy, anime. Uh, Tokyo Revengers, uh, Sena Kesin Hen. Uh, this is the second season of Tokyo Revengers. Um, for whatever reason, uh, did oh, that's why Disney Plus got it. How the fuck, how the fuck did Crunchyroll let that go? How did Crunchyroll let that go? Tokyo Revengers was like, was on Crunchyroll for the first season. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. Christmas Showdown is the is that. Damn, damn, damn. The second season, yeah. It's uh Disney Plus. I don't have Disney Plus. Alright, well, I cannot tell you that I will be checking out this season Tokyo Revengers, but in the future I might check it out. Um Here's the, uh, here is the romantic comedy set in high school that I am most excited about out of any of these, uh, that we, that, that I've talked about here. Uh, Tomo Chan is a girl. Uh, um, uh, Tomo suddenly awakens to romantic feelings for her best friend. But June is just like, oh, wait, you're a girl? Didn't know that. But like. It doesn't really matter. You're still my childhood friend who I thought was a boy. It's a fun premise. And it and it's her like kind of like muscling her way through the problems. Uh, and I think that's like a fun um, a, a fun premise. So I'll be checking out Tomo Chan is a girl. Uh, that's on Crunchyroll. Trigon Stampede. You know I'm going to fucking watch this weird. Why is this happening? Remake. Original new version with like at least one really strange choice already that I don't want to get into. I'm, you know I'm going to fucking watch Trigon Stampede. I'm going to watch Trigon Stampede. I don't know if Vash the Stampede works in 2023 the way Vash the Stampede worked in the 90s but I want to find out. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I didn't watch the first season of this sports drama, uh, Unite Up, Unite Up, um, Unite Up is a great name for a music, uh, for like an idol show that I won't watch, but again, Cloverworks is putting it out, that's cool, but Unite Up is a fun name, uh, Vinland Saga season two. I did not like Vinland Saga. I know that makes me an outlier. But I did not like Vinland Saga. I don't think I'm going to watch Vinland Saga Season 2. Also, kind of felt like Vinland Saga had a definitive ending. Obviously, there's more of it. Um, But it felt like the first season kind of had a good end point. It wasn't like a happy ending. But it was a good ending. 
I don't know if we need more. We got to wrap this up because it's been, uh, this video is now two hours local recording. Um, these TV shorts, many of them we won't get. So we're just going to kind of breeze through these. Uh, leftovers, more blue lock. Uh, we just talked about these shows. Um, my hero is Academia. I'll be watching. Play it cool, guys. are getting uh, that ended. I don't know why that's in leftovers. Oh, it probably aired. All the episodes aired in Japan, but they're slowly coming out. That's my guess. Um, Eminence and Shadow again. The Isakat. One of the Isakats I won't be watching this coming season. Um, Welcome to Demon School. We'll check out that. You know, Mushi Pedal. We'll be watching more of that. We got some movies coming out. Uh, Blue Giant. This is a fucking great photo. I don't think I'm going to be watching that movie. I don't know if I'll be able to. But, yeah. Um, a Doraemon movie. Golden Kingdom and Water Kingdom. I've heard very good things. Madhouse is doing this movie. I've heard very good things about this romance movie. Um, Gridman Universe, which is the theatrical follow-up to uh, Dinozeon. Uh, that's cool. I did not love Diazion as much as other people did, but I loved Gridman. So I will probably see this. It's also a mech thing. You know, I'll check it out. Um, Mystery Train. Uh, Detective Conan, Mystery Train stuff. Uh, Saki to Miyano. They... They're doing a movie. They're making a movie about these these lovely gay boys. They're making a movie about them. That's great. Studio Dean making a movie. Uh, behind the line. Uh, I don't know. A peaceful spinoff. I do not know. Uh, this is the, the compilation film. Not to be confused with the other film. Not to be confused with the other film. They're basically, they're putting out movies to to get you. They want to put companion movies out and then watch the Gridman Universe movie. Uh, the Imaginary, I've heard good things about as well. Uh, and then we got some specials. Uh, Agretzko season five. If you're like, wait, there was a season four? Yeah, there was a season four. It kind of came and went. But there's going to be a fifth season uh, in February of Agretzko. Uh... Evangelion 3.0 minus 46H, which is the bonus disc. God damn it. To celebrate the second anniversary of Shin Evangelion movie. Yes, let's celebrate the two years since a movie. Uh, and a bunch of other specials and stuff. Uh, Junji Ito Maniac. Uh, Netflix is getting that. Uh, Lupin the Third versus Lupin the Third versus Cat's Eye. This rules. Uh, oh, Amazon Prime in Japan has that. That's fucking cool. This is uh, the 50th anniversary of Lupin the Third and the 40th anniversary of Cat's Eye. Um, and it's in, set in the 80s. That's fucking dope. I'm going to have to try to track that down. And TMS is making it, of course. But that's that's a cool crossover. That's That's really cool. Make My Day. I don't know anything about that. Record of... Yes, they are making a sequel to Record of Ragnarok. A barely animated anime. Um, Because I believe that two fights, like the entire first season was just two fights. Yeah, there's more of that coming. Saint Seiya Knights of the Zodiac Season 3. Uh, Way of the House Husband Season 2. And it starts on the first. You can celebrate the new year with uh, Way of the House Husband season two. I did not love the Way of the House Husband anime motion comic adaptation, but I did not hate it more than uh, as much as some people hated it. But I wish I liked it more. I just really liked the manga. You know what I actually liked? I liked the live action commercials for the anime adaptation i think those at uh, that was cool uh and then a second season of some sort of children's show about egypt things oh suddenly egyptian god um and that's it for anime uh we'll go back to this screen here um 
folks that are watching live, I will talk to you in a second. Folks that are watching this video on YouTube, um, the very next Pat Bears Anime Club that comes out, uh, Anime Club episode that comes out on uh, January 16th will be my top 10 for 2022. Uh, there will be a write-up on my co-host if you want to read that or watch the video. Thank you so much for watching this very long episode of Pat Bears Anime Club. I am now going to let you go, and then I'm going to talk to the fine folks that are watching the live stream, which is incredible that they're still here. Goodbye, and uh, check out one of the other videos because this is one of many Pat Bears Anime Club videos. Uh, thanks for watching, and let me know what you're looking forward to most this coming season.